Hi, welcome back. In this video, we're going to be talking about the short story The Evening, The Morning, and The Night by Octavia Butler. Um, sometimes classified as a novella, but I'm just calling it a short story. Um, and a couple notes at the top before we discuss this. Uh, the story does have moments of self-harm, um, murder, suicide, and disturbing imagery. Um, so just a brief warning on the content of this story. And with that, let's go ahead and hop into the opening passage. You'll marry my son, she said finally. Yes. Good. You'll keep him safe. As much as possible, we'll keep each other safe. Yes, I said. Good. No one will close him away from himself. No one will tie him or cage him. Her hand wandered to her own face again, nails biting in slightly. And with that, as always, let's hop into our summary of this story. Um, the Evening and the Morning and the Night by Octavia Butler is classic Butler. If you've read Blood Child, Dawn, Parable of the Sower, or any other works by her, you should be familiar with some of the themes Butler explores in the story. And like others, it's a story full of tough choices that extrapolates on human behavior and contemporary scientific issues while diving into uncomfortable territory. The story revolves around a fictional disease known as DGD. DGD is a hereditary disease that causes individuals to harm themselves and others among other symptoms, with all symptoms accelerating with age. Um, there's no cure in the story, but individuals can control the disease to an extent with a careful diet. People living with DGD deal with prejudice and are required to wear DGD markers. Lynn, our main character, inherited DGD from both her parents. At a young age, she attempted suicide, and later on in life, her father killed her mother and himself due to DGD. Buying time in until her own symptoms appear, uh, she goes to college to study and eventually comes to live with a few other individuals with DGD off campus. Although hesitant at first, she and one of these individuals, a man named Alan, fall in love. And while most people with DGD pass away violently in a DGD hospital ward, some people with DGD are able to go to DILG, a facility run by and for people with DGD. Um, Alan convinces Lynn to go with him to see his mother, who is living at DILG. Well there, well there, Lynn and Alan learn that people with DGD are able to live and pursue productive and creative lives under care at the facility. Between interactions with Alan's mother and Beatrice, a doctor with DGD working there, it's revealed that women born of two parents with DGD emit a pheromone that is able to calm and control other individuals with the disease. Beatrice is one such woman and pressures Lynn to follow in her footsteps. It's revealed that Lynn's college scholarship and the invitation to visit the facility were planned by Beatrice and others like her to recruit Lynn. The story ends with Lynn reflecting on how subtle factors beyond human control, such as pheromones, influence our actions. Uh, which takes us into our notes for this story. Um, I would be remiss if I did not pull from Butler's own afterward. One of the great things about her writing is that she often provides afterwards, giving us a glimpse into her thoughts. She states, I added my own particular twists, a sensitivity to pheromones and the sufferer's persistent delusion that they are trapped, imprisoned within their own flesh, and that that flesh is somehow not truly part of them. In that last, I took an idea familiar to us all, present in many religions and philosophies, and carried it to a terrible extreme. She's talking about borrowing from um, the various diseases into kind of merging into her own um, created disease, DGD. And with that, it's important to note that agency then is the primary theme of the work. That's really what the story is about. Whether it's being fated to die from a disease, being forced to take on a job, even if it's for a good cause, um, or something like genetics or pheromones or biological influences um, on who we're attracted to. You know, there's that double meaning that she presents trapped in their own flesh. Um, she also notes in the afterwards that this is, as she says, an important question, but a dangerous question. Um, kind of hinting at how people have used arguments related to this type of stuff um, in eugenics and for uh, very harmful and dangerous ends. As an additional note on the story, uh, the community between patients is also really interesting. Advocates for disease in the real world are often best when individuals with the disease um, are leading those causes. Um, and DILG started off as a group searching for a solution. Uh, which takes us into our final question for the story. 
Um, one of the big questions in this story is why does Lynn feel like she has to work for Dilg? Do the necessity of the does the necessity of the work and potential moral good make it impossible to pursue a different path? As always, um, sorry before that. As a side thought, are there any moral necessities that compel you in your life? Um, and as always, cite the text and any other sources to support your answer. Um, I really enjoyed this story. I hope you did as well. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.